So after knowing those assumptions that we usually assume when we analyze a beam, let's now move on to the method that we can use to analyze a beam to find out the internal forces acting on a beam. Actually, yung method na ituturo ko for us to be able to analyze a beam, actually, naaral na natin nung nandun pa tayo sa truss. Yung tinatawag na method of section. So, medyo yung binotify lang na natin ng konti yung definition ng method of sections dito. So, ginawa ko lang generalize. So, anong sinasabi sa method of sections? Sabi niya, if a body is in equilibrium, therefore, dapat, each segment of the body is also in equilibrium. So, parang, the same lang yan ng definition dun sa truss. Yung body, pinalitan, yung truss, pinalitan ko lang ng body. So, anong sinasabi sa method of sections? Sabi niya, kung meron daw tayo yung body or structure, say, for example, a beam, and we say na yung beam natin na to, is in equilibrium. Sabi sa method of sections, dapat daw, pag kinat natin yan into segment, say for example, two segments, so kinat natin, so nag nagkaroon tayo ng dalawang segment, sabi ni method of section, dapat daw yung dalawang segment na yan na nabuo, they are both in equilibrium. Ibig sabihin, dapat summation ng forces and moment on this segment equal dapat sa zero. Summation ng forces and moment at this segment equal din dapat sa zero. Now, uh, since napansin nyo, yung beam, hinati natin siya into two segments. Kanina, yung beam rigidly joined together. Ngayon, pinaghiwalay natin, dinisconnect natin, and we know from the previous discussions that kapag nag-disconnect tayo ng parts that are originally connected, merong lumalabas na internal forces. In this case, kung naalala nyo yung sinabi ko kanina sa assumption, sa assumption number 1, we assume na yung beam is rigidly connected. It is rigidly joined together. So again, when we say rigid, ibig sabihin yung connection nito at saka nito, connection ng beam sa sarili niya to itself is assumed to be fixed connection. So when we say fixed connection, pag dinisconnect mo siya from being connected, may lalabas na dalawang forces at saka isang moment equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Ganun pag fix or rigid connection, di ba? So, dito, sa case na to, since pinaghiwalay natin yung beam, yung dalawang part ng beam na originally connected, may lalabas dapat na internal forces. So, alam natin na yung internal forces na yun, since fixed connection nga siya, dalawang forces yun, tsaka isang moment. So, so yung isang force dun sa dalawang force na lalabas, pag pinaghiwalay mo siya, dahil nga fixed connection siya, eto siya, yung isa dun sa dalawang force na yun. So, dapat yan, equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Usually, may tinatawag tayo dyan sa uh, lalabas na force na yan, pag pinaghiwalay mo to from being connected. Usually, ang tawag natin dyan sa force na yan ay N. What is that N? That is what we call normal force. So, bakit siya tinawag na normal force? When we say normal, it's synonymous to the word perpendicular. Perpendicular saan yung force na to? Perpendicular siya dito sa cross-sectional area nung beam. Eh, no? Naka 90 degrees siya. That's why it's called normal force. The other force na lalabas pag pinaghiwalay natin to from being connected is this. So, equal in magnitude yan, but opposite in direction. So, may usually, may usual na tayo na tinatawag dyan sa force na yan na lalabas pag 
dinisconnect natin tong beam from being connected. Ang tawag natin dyan sa component na yan ng force na lalabas pag dinisconnect mo to is V. And what is that V? V stands for shear force. So, ano yung shear force na yan? Yan usually yung force na along the cross-section of the beam. So, kung kanina yung normal force, it's perpendicular sa cross-sectional area ng beam. Yung shear force na yan, naman, usually, it acts along the cross-sectional area ng beam. So, yan yung V, yung shear force. Lastly, yung last na internal force or load na lalabas when we disconnect this, that is assumed fixed connection, ay moment. And yung moment na yun, equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And yung moment na yan, may, tinatawag, may tawag na tayo dyan. Ang tawag natin dyan usually ay M. So, what is M? M stands for bending moment. Yan. Yan yung moment na part na lalabas kapag pinaghiwalay mo ang dalawang connected rigidly or sabihin, they are connected. Uh, they have fixed connection, if sabihin. So, again, sa ano bang sinasabi sa method of sections? Dapat daw yung dalawang segment na yan. Yan, yung free body diagram ng dalawang segment. Ito, tsaka to, dapat they are both in equilibrium. If we say that the original structure, nung di pa natin sila pinag is in equilibrium. So, dapat dito sa segment na to, dapat yung summation of forces and moment dyan, equal dapat sa zero. So, usually naman yung resultant ginagawa natin in terms of component. So, dapat pag nag-summation forces, horizontal and vertical ka dyan, equal dapat sa zero. Ganon din yung moment. Dapat pag nag-moment ka at any point dyan, dapat zero din yung lalabas. If we say na in equilibrium siya. So, ganon din dapat yung kabilang segment according to method of section. So, dapat yung mga nakikita nyong forces and moments dyan. Dapat, they are in equilibrium as well. Ibig sabihin, dapat summation forces horizontal and vertical and moment equal dapat sa zero. So, kagaya sa ano, sa, sa truss, yung mga internal force na yan na lalabas when you when you cut a beam, yung mga yan, they are also vector. Parang yung sa internal force na lumalabas sa truss. ba diba? sa truss, ano ba yung internal force? Usually, it's a force directed, same direction doon sa axis ng member. And, just like this one, yung force na yun, acting on the truss, it's a vector. So, when we say vector, it has magnitude and direction. So, kagaya nga ng sinabi ko dun sa truss, usually, yung direction ng force na nag act sa member ng truss, uh, we usually indicate its direction, hindi na using by angle, nyari, 10 degrees from the horizontal direction or the horizontal axis. Hindi na natin siya ganun in-specify yung angle nun, ng internal force na nag act sa truss. We usually specify it as either tension or compression. So, ganung way natin ini-indicate yung direction ng uh, force acting on a member ng truss. So, again, when we say tension, parang ganito siya. It acts parang pointing outward from the member. Yan, pointing outward. Parang ganyan yung tension. And usually, dun sa truss, we assign tension forces as positive. And then, pag naging negative siya sa computation natin, uh, ibig sabihin, hindi, hindi talaga siya tension, kundi pa compression talaga siya, which is a force directed towards the member. So, ganun yung naging sign convention natin to specify. Ginamit natin yung ganung sign convention to specify the direction of the force forces acting on a member of a truss. So, kapag positive, alam natin na ang direction ng force ay pag ganito, outward, pointing outward from the member. Pag nag-negative, sabihin, pointing towards the member. Compression siya. So, just like what we did there sa truss, ganun din yung gagawin natin dito sa beam. Meron din tayong gagawin na sign convention. Kumbaga, actually, yung mga pinakita ko dito na direction, those are the uh, positive uh, sense netong mga internal forces na to na nag-a-act sa loob ng beam. 
So that is how we usually indicate the direction of this internal forces. Ibig sabihin, parang yung sa trust, di ba ang positive natin, tension. Ganun din dito. Yung mga nakikita nyo na yan, pag nakita mo na ang value nitong moment, normal force saka shear force, positive. Ibig sabihin, ganyan yung direction niya. Ibig sabihin, kung positive yun ako ang mga normal force, ibig sabihin, ang direction niya is pointing outward na member. Pag nakuha mong uh, shear force is uh, positive, ibig sabihin, kung titignan mo yung left segment, the shear force is pointing downward. Kung yung kabilang segment mo yung titignan mo, the shear force is acting upward. Kasi nga, they are, they have equal uh, magnitude but opposite in direction. Yung bending moment, pag positive yung nakuha natin, ibig sabihin, ganito yung direction niya. Parang pa-counterclockwise. Pag left segment yung titignan mo. Pero pag right segment, it is clockwise. So, yan yung mga positive sense ng mga internal forces na to. Yan yung inasign natin na positive, positive direction. So, syempre, pag nag-compute tayo and we found out na negative pala yung direct, negative yung sign nung na-compute natin. Say, for example, yung yung bending moment na compute natin is negative. Ibig sabihin lang nun, the actual direction of bending moment is opposite netong nilagay ko dito. So, hindi pala siya talaga counterclockwise kung left segment yung titignan mo. Kung negative yung na-compute mo, ibig sabihin, kabaliktaran pala siya, dapat pala pointing clockwise siya kung left segment yung titignan. Pero kung right segment, syempre, ang direction ng bending moment dapat is counterclockwise. So, ganun yung sign convention natin. That is how we indicate the direction of this internal forces. Pag positive yung nakuha mo, ibig sabihin, ganito yung directions ng mga internal forces mo. Otherwise, pag negative, ibig sabihin, opposite lang. Opposite lang ng mga nakikita nyo dito. So, tatandaan nyo na yan. Tatandaan nyo na yung ganyang sign convention. Kasi, ganyan tayo, gaga ganyan yung gagamitin natin when we solve problems. Ngayon, gusto ko lang pakita sa inyo, ano ba yung uh, nagagawa nung positive shear force, positive bending moment, and positive normal force sa beam or sa isang cross-section ng isang beam. Gusto ko lang pakita sa inyo, ano ba yung actual niya na nagagawa. So, observe natin itong section na to nung beam. Observe natin, ano ba yung nagagawa dyan sa section na yan netong shear force na to, netong normal force na to, tsaka netong bending moment na to, yung mga positive direction nila, ano bang nagagawa talaga dyan sa section nya yan. So, unahin ko na yung shear force. So, ang nagagawa ng shear force na yan, acting on this section, so ito lang din yung section na yan, yung red line na yan, tsaka yung red line na to, pares lang na yan. So, ano ba yung nagagawa ng positive shear force? Yan, yung downward na yan. Ano ba yung nagagawa ng positive shear force dito sa section na to? Mm. Ang nagagawa ng positive shear force sa uh, isa cross-section na isang beam is parang it tends to shear off the beam in this manner. Yan, yung nakikita nyo na yan. Yung, parang yung left side or yung left segment niya moves upward, tapos yung right segment niya moves downward. Yan yung nagagawa ng positive shear. Itong nakikita nyo na force na yan, downward force na yan. Ito yan, yung downward na to. Itong kabila, yung upward, ito yan. So again, uh, yan yung nagagawa ng isang positive shear force dun sa isang cross-section ng isang beam. So pwede mo rin siyang tignan as parang ang positive shear force is nakakapag-produce siya ng uh, clockwise moment both on this uh, segment. So, dito sa left segment, ang napaproduce niya is uh, clockwise moment. Dito sa right segment, ang napaproduce niya is clockwise uh, moment din. So, pwede mo siyang itake as ganun yung effect ng isang positive shear force. Siyempre, kung negative yung shear force natin, syempre yung effect is kabaligtaran lang. So, in, 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 instead of yung left side is mag-move upward, and yung right side or right segment mag-move downward, edi magbabaliktad lang. Yung left mag-move downward, yung right mag-move upward. So, mababaliktad lang yung direction netong mga nakikita nyo na forces. Kung negative yung shear force na nag act dito sa particular cross-section na to ng beam. So, that is what a positive shear force tends to do in a 
cross section ng isang beam parang na shear off niya yung legs yung left segment pataas and pababa naman yung kabilang segment next eh yung ano naman yung bending moment positive bending moment na ganyan ano naman kaya yung nagagawa ng positive bending moment dito sa cross section na to ng beam so ang positive bending moment ang nagagawa niya dito sa sa beam sa isang cross section ng beam it tends to bend the beam in this manner. Yan. Yan yung nagagawa ng isang positive moment sa beam. It tends to bend the beam to be concave upward. So, para siya nakakoncave upward. Nakatutok siya pataas. So, itong moment na yan, yung counterclockwise na yan, eto yan, yung nakikita nyo na to. Itong kabila, yung clockwise, eto yan. So, ang nagagawa niyang positive bending moment na yan sa beam is just, is this, like this. So, binibend niya yung beam, concave upward. Usually, ang tawag namin dyan, parang ang nagagawa ng bending moment is napapara, parang napapahappy niya yung beam. Kasi parang smiling face niya, di ba? Parang nakangiti. So, ang tawag namin dyan sa positive bending moment, happy, parang ganun. Siyempre, yung kabaliktaran ng positive bending moment, which is negative bending moment, ang effect niya sa beam is kabaliktaran nito. So, instead of concave upward ka, ang nagagawa ng negative bending moment sa beam is nagiging concave downward. So, ang tawag naman namin doon is parang sad naman kasi nakabaliktad eh. Instead of happy na ganyan, parang nakabaliktad na ganyan, parang sad face. So, usually yun yung tawag namin sa negative bending moment. Parang it makes the beam in a uh, parang uh, look na sad face siya. So, that is what a positive bending moment uh, does in a beam, particularly on this cross-section ng beam. Lastly, yung normal force, yung positive normal force. Ano naman ang ginagawa ng positive normal force? Ayan, anong nagagawa niya dito sa cross-section na to or sa beam, sa mismong beam? So, ang positive normal force, it tends to uh, do this on a beam. So, parang na-elongate niya yung, ano, yung beam natin. Yan. Yung positive normal force. So, parang kung i-re-relate nyo yan sa truss, yung positive normal force na yan, yan yung tension force dun sa truss. So, again, syempre, yung kapaligtaran ng positive normal force, which is negative normal force, kapaligtaran yung effect nya. Instead of parang napapa-elongate nyo yung member or yung beam, tendency, napapa-shorten nya. Parang kinocompress nya yung, yung beam. That is what a negative normal force does on a beam, particularly on a cross-section ng beam. So, ang kaibahan nitong mga internal force na yan sa beam compared dun sa truss. Sa truss kasi parang ganito yung nangyayari, di ba? Ang kaibahan ng internal forces acting on a beam sa internal forces acting on a truss is yung internal forces acting on a truss sa members ng truss usually they are assumed constant all throughout the length of the member. Ibig sabihin, yung magnitude niya is uh, pare-parehas lang all throughout the uh, member. Ibig sabihin, pag nag-cut ka dito, pag tinignan mo internal force dito, internal force dito, internal force dito, pare-parehas lang sila ng magnitude kung sa truss. Unlike sa beam, yung magnitude ng shear force at bending moment sa beam, Usually, it varies along the length no beam. Ibig sabihin, iba yung, usually, iba yung bending moment at shear force dito sa section na to. Iba yung shear force and bending moment sa section na to. Sa section na to. Sa section na to. So, it varies along the length. Although yung normal force, normal force na yan, usually, parang sa truss lang, we assume na constant lang siya all throughout the length. Pero kasi medyo madalang din naman na magkaroon ng, ano, ng normal force ang beam. Kasi nga, usually, kung naalala yung assumption natin kanina, usually, we assume na yung load na dinadala ng beam ay perpendicular with respect dito sa 
longitudinal axis niya. So, kung, longit kung perpendicular yun, usually, ang napaproduce lang nun is shear force and bending moment. Madalas wala ng normal force yun. Not unless yung force is hindi naka, not unless yung applied force is hindi naka perpendicular sa longitudinal axis. Kunyari, nakaganito, ayan. That's why in this case, merong na-produce na normal force kasi hindi lang naka-perpendicular yung load mo, eh. merong naka-slant na ganito. Eh. So, that's the time na magkakaroon ng normal force na internal force. So, yan yung mga positive sense, again, ng mga internal forces na to acting on a beam. And, ito yung nagagawa nila sa beam, particularly on this cross section. So, again, kung negative, yung effect lang is opposite lang na itong mga nakikita nyo dito. Are you still looking at me?